Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on In The Blocks. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can integrate Web3 with MetaMask. It's very important to follow this video because MetaMask is by far the most popular wallet for user of decentralized application. So if your decentralized application does not integrate with MetaMask, then pretty much nobody will use your dApp. That's pretty much guaranteed. So first, let's have an overview of how MetaMask works and how it integrates with the rest of your decentralized application. So we start by the front end. So our end user want to do some transaction. So the front end is going to create an unsigned transaction and is going to send a request to MetaMask to sign this transaction. MetaMask is going to forward this request to the end user and it's going to show him a pop-up to confirm that he or she wants to sign this transaction. The end user will be able to see some details about the transaction and if everything seems fine, then he clicks on confirm. MetaMask in turn will sign a transaction and will send this signed transaction to the Ethereum network. You can actually choose which Ethereum network you want to target, but basically you can send a transaction to Mainnet, the real Ethereum network, as well as public testnet like Robston, Kovan, Rinkby, and you can also add your custom network, so that means you can also connect to your local Ganache instance. By the way, that means that when you use MetaMask, you don't need to set up Infura. MetaMask takes care itself of how to send a transaction to the Ethereum blockchain. So that's less work for us developers. Before we continue in this video, you will need to install the MetaMask browser extension. I'm gonna show you how to do it for Google Chrome, but you can also find the extension for Firefox. So here I'm going to the Chrome Web Store where you can install all sort of browser extension and I'm gonna search for MetaMask. So here that's the first result with the famous Fox icon. So you click on the Add to Chrome button yeah, you confirm add extension and it's going to run the install procedure. So after you should see this screen and you can see that the fox is following my mouse. Like this is a, a famous feature of MetaMask. So you click on get started. And here you will see two options. If you already have an Ethereum address, you probably also have a seed phrase that is used to generate it. So in this case, you choose the left option, or if you want to create a brand new Ethereum address, then you choose the right option. So we're gonna choose create a wallet on the right. Then it's gonna ask you if you wanna send them some user metrics so that they can improve the product. So it's cut up on my screen, but you'll see two button. No thanks, or I agree, or you choose what you wanna do. It doesn't really matter. Then you need to create a new password for your MetaMask. So I'll let you do this. And once this is done, you tick here, I have read and agree, and you'll be able to click on the create button. So next screen is the backup phrase, which is also known as the seed phrase. So that's a sequence of 12 words that is used to generate a series of Ethereum addresses. So whoever has this seed phrase is able to get all the private key of all the Ethereum addresses that are derived from this seed phrase. So in general, it's better to keep an extra copy of this seed phrase offline so that you can restore your wallet anywhere if for some reason you lose access to this MetaMask. So here I'm just using MetaMask as playground. I don't really care about this seed phrase. I will never use this Ethereum addresses for mainnet. So here there are two buttons that I cut up on my screen that say remind me later or next. So I'm just gonna choose remind me later and boom, this is your MetaMask. So here, this is the full screen view of MetaMask. But in most cases, when end users actually interact with a decentralized application, it's not what they will see. Instead, end user will see a small pop-up on top of the web page of the dApp that they are using. So you probably need to reload your Chrome browser if you want to see the MetaMask icon appearing in the list of all your extension. And once you can see the icon, you can click on it and you will see the pop-up I'm talking about. All right, so now let's see some code example. So here I have set up a decentralized application project with a smart contract. For that, I'm using the Truffle framework. If you don't know what is Truffle, check out my introduction video. And in order to go faster, I've actually used a special command of Truffle, which is called Truffle 
and box that allow you to set up a project very quickly. And I choose the React configuration. So that's going to set up both the smart contract part and also the front end. So we will have a front end application with React. And from this front end application, we will interact with our smart contract. So here you can see the structure of my project. And in my contract directory, smart contract we will use is simple storage. So this is a very simple smart contract with a single integer variable. We can change its value and we can also get its value. And now let's check out the front end. So in the, in the client folder, we have our React project. By the way, it doesn't matter if you don't really know React because we're not going to use any fancy feature of React in this example. I'm only going to focus with the on the integration with Web3 and MetaMask. That's it. So here I'm going to go in app.js, which is the main file for our front end. So on this line, we import the JSON compilation artifact of Truffle, where we will have the address of our smart contract and also the ABI. This I will explain later. And here we have our React component. Well, where basically we're going to have a very, very simple UI to change the value of our variable in our smart contract. So component did mount. So basically this function is executed only once when the React application first loads. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set up Web3. And once we have Web3 after, we're going to create and a contract object and with this contract object we'll be able to interact with our smart contract by the way if you don't know what is a contract object check out the previous video in my series in this series about web3 i explain all of this so here the critical thing is when we instantiate web3 here so we're not going to use the get web3 function provided by the truffle the, the react box Instead, we're going to instantiate Web3 ourselves. So first, we're going to check if on the window object, we have an Ethereum object provided. So the window object is provided by web browser. And when a MetaMask is present, it's going to inject this Ethereum object on the window object. So if this exists, this means that we have MetaMask, then we're going to, oh, by the way, I forgot to define Web3 before. And in this case, we're going to instantiate Web3 like this, new Web3, and we pass it window.ethereum. So window.ethereum implement the provider API of Web3. So Web3 will be able to delegate all the requests to this provider object. If you don't know what's a Web3 provider, check out this video. But this is not enough because MetaMask also has a privacy feature where users need to explicitly allow decentralized application to use their MetaMask. Otherwise, the problem before was that a decentralized application could sort of spy on user by getting their list of addresses, even if user didn't do any action. And this could be used to track user. And so that was an invasion of user privacy. So MetaMask decided to introduce the, this new feature to protect user. So let's ask our user to enable our decentralized application. You do it like this. So you're going to await that Ethereum enable complete and it's going to show a pop-up to the user that say hey do you want to uh, to give access to this app and once you have this then here you can use can use web3 with metamask so this will work if the user has the latest version of metamask but we also need to test if user have an older version of metamask or also if any user have other kind of wallet so in this case, we're going to test if window.web3 is present. And if that's the case, we either have an old MetaMask or an other wallet. So in this case, we're going to instantiate Web3 that way, new Web3. Then we check the window Web3 that is injected by the wallet and on it, 
we can access what is called the current provider. So I know that this is a little bit confusing. It's basically there is already a Web3 object injected by the wallet, but we're not going to use it directly because we want to use uh, our own version of, of Web3. We are only interested in the, the provider of this injected Web3. And this time there is no need to do any uh, enable step because it doesn't exist. We are using an old wallet here or not MetaMask. And after that, then here you can use, can use Web3 or MetaMask. So that's all you need to do to integrate Web3 with MetaMask. However, it's better to use the get Web3 function that's provided by this truffle box. So you know what, we're going to put back what we had at the beginning. And I'm going to show you quickly this file. So this is going to be very similar to what I show you, but they do also something extra. So they set up this add event listener and they wait for the page to load because uh, otherwise you can have some timing issue with the injection of Web3. If your page loads too quickly and the web, the MetaMask hasn't had time already to, to inject the Ethereum object or the Web3 object, then your, your integration will not work. It doesn't happen all the time, but this is like, like a small caveat. So this is more safe if you add this. And then you can see that they are doing the same thing that I showed you before. Otherwise, they use this old version of, uh, of MetaMask or another wallet. And they added also something else, a fallback. So if none of the above work, then we're going to set up our own connection to the local to, to our blockchain. So we're going to use a custom provider. So we're not going to use MetaMask at all. And here we're going to connect to Ganache at port 8545. And after here, we resolve Web3 because all of this is a promise, basically. All right, so now let's do a demonstration. I'm going to run Ganache and we're going to load the application on the front end. And by using MetaMask, we're going to connect to Ganache. So here, instead of doing Truffle Develop this time, I'm going to run Ganache myself with Ganache CLI. So that's also an NPM package. You need to install it globally if you don't already have it. And I want to specify an option to Ganache CLI. I want to specify the seed phrase that is used to generate the 10 Ethereum addresses that comes pre-funded with some Ether. And I'm going to use the same seed phrase as MetaMask. This way, these addresses of MetaMask will have already some Ether in them and I will be able to send some transaction. Otherwise, if I don't do this and I try to use the address generated by, by MetaMask, it will not work because this address will have zero Ether. First, I'm going to go to my web browser and I'm going to click on the icon of MetaMask. So you should see the Fox icon next to your search bar. And I'm going to go in settings i'm going to scroll down and here in security privacy i'm going to click on reveal seed words okay so i'm going to enter my password and click on next okay so this is this series of word here so i'm going to copy this to the clipboard then here i come back to my terminal and i'm going to give this as an option to ganache cli all right so now we're going to connect MetaMask to Ganache. So I'm going to go back to my web browser and open MetaMask again. And here it barely show on my screen, but basically you have a drop down to select the different networks. So we are on the main Ethereum network, but we don't want this one. Instead, we want to select localhost here. So localhost is going to connect to localhost port 8545. And actually you can create as many custom network as you want. You click on custom RPC and you specify the network name. The more important is the URL. And then you have a couple of optional parameters and you can even set up a block explorer if you have one, but we're not going to use this. We're already good with localhost 8545. 
So here, this is the first address generated by MetaMask. And I can see that I already have 100 ETH. And this is because we've synchronized the seed phrase with Ganache. Otherwise, you will see zero here. So back to our terminal. Oh, and by the way, you can see the log of Ganache on the left. So this is because MetaMask is sending requests to get some info about the account. So let's create a new terminal and inside we're going to deploy our smart contract. So truffle migrate reset and we're going to specify the network. So we want to deploy to the develop network. And why we want to deploy to the to the develop network because here that's what I specify in truffle config. So in the network ski here, I specify the develop network. So the URL is here localhost, then any it accepts any network ID, and here we can see the port, so it connects to, to Ganache here. And I can see in my terminal that the smart contract has been deployed. So now we need to, to run the front end. So I'm gonna go to the client folder. I'm gonna install all the dependencies. And after that, I'm gonna run npm start. So it's gonna start the front, the server for the front end. And then you should be taken to the front end. So you will see this loading web three accounts and contract. And you will see this notification of MetaMask. So this is because we call the enable func the enable method on the Ethereum object. And it asks you to allow your, this decentralized application to access MetaMask. So here you click on connect. If you click on cancel, is gonna, the promise in the code is gonna throw an error. Otherwise the execution is going to continue normally. So we click on connect. And now the user can start using our decentralized application. So actually I thought that in the example provided by the React Truffle box, we would have an input and a button to uh, to change the value of our variable in our smart contract, but that's not the case. And you know what? I will leave this to you as an exercise. So just a quick tip. So when you write your code for this, you don't have to take into consideration MetaMask. You just use the Web3 object. You just do as if there was no MetaMask, the code will be exactly the same. So that's really the beauty of the, the, the Web3 provider object. It totally abstracts which wallet you are using. If you have any question or you are stuck for this, ask me in the comments down below. By the way, there is really a lot to learn about Web3. So I've prepared a Web3 cheat sheet with all the most important information that you need to know as a blockchain developer. This is free. You can get your hand on it by following the link in the description. In the next video, I'm going to show you the utilities function of WebStream. These are small functions that are easy to use and very convenient. So make sure to follow this video as well. Thanks for watching. See you for the next video.